I am sitting next to the incredibly good looking cast of the upcoming Transformer spinoff, Bumblebee. You stop. <laughs> which is being released this December. How are you guys? Thanks so much for being here. Very good. Thank you for Thank you. Thank this you movie is so me. highly anticipated. I am personally so excited. When I watched the trailer, I literally got chills when I heard the late Bernie Mac's voice. And it just feels like such a coming of age movie. And I really got Iron Giant vibes. Is that the tone of this movie? Is this movie going to be like the Iron Giant? That, I mean, that is an aspect of it, yes. I mean, it is uh, sort of modeled after those classic Amblin, Spielbergian, coming-of-age tales of the 80s. You know, things like E.T., uh, Iron Giant is, is, is in that similar kind of vein. Uh, you know, that experience that we go through as we're transitioning from one phase in our life to the next. And it felt like the perfect kind of setting and story to set this origin story for Bumblebee in that kind of framework. And uh, Haley's character, Charlie and Bumblebee, they meet each other. They're both these kind of broken souls. And over the course of this adventure, they, they heal each other. It's a really lovely and action-packed story. Oh, we're so excited for it. Since it's in the 80s, will we see Bumblebee in a pair of parachute pants or a members-only jacket? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You're going to have to see the movie, but I'm not going to say no, I'm not going to say yes. Well, the 80s were a time where the Transformers were basically, I wouldn't know, but I've heard, the best new friend that any human could have. So I'm curious to know, George, since we weren't around in the 80s, mm -hmm. what is everyone's first connection to the Transformers? Mine would be when they came out. Uh, and, and literally, uh, because you could get two toys for the price of one toy. Right. So uh, with four brothers and a very busy household and everyone trying to get what they could, you, with Transformers you could literally have two toys for one toy. So that's, I can vividly remember wanting Transformers for that reason. Right. Yeah, for me it was uh, Transformers Armada, which was, I think, the second version of the TV show. That one didn't have Bumblebee, but it had Hot Shot. Right. So when the movies came out, I was really, like, super confused. But uh, yeah, that was a fun time. I remember that and, and the, I think, the McDonald's toys mm -hmm. had Transformers for a bit. So that was, that was my first time. Yeah, I'd them. always pick the boys' Happy Meal because that one always had They them. got the good toys. What about it's, you, Travis? It was interesting because the Transformers universe has now been around for about 35 years. And so it's funny because you have these different iterations. People who came of age with these toys, with these characters and these stories at different points. For some people, it's, it's Michael's films, the, the, their first exposure to Transformers. For me and for John, it was the first time Transformers were launched in America. And yeah, I was a kid when those toys came, you know, came onto the market, and the animated series, and the comic books came out, and I absolutely loved it. I'd never seen anything like it. And for us, setting this film in that era, it allowed us to go back to that kind of feel, that kind of aesthetic, and that kind of a vibe that you get from that initial, that, that initial launch of the film, why they were so wondrous and so special. Right. My parents always tried me. They always had the generic versions. Let's start Go with bots. the G. We won't name them. Oh, you Go just bots. did. It's fine because Hasbro owns, owns them now. We can <laughs> okay. say oh, we can? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, I, I mean, it's a few Go Bots myself. <laughs> I would get so mad at my mom. I'd be like, Mom, you're ruining my life. We have the generic of everything. I still don't know what Fruit Loops taste like. So it was, it was the you know, they have grocery stores that, that where you can actually buy a box of Fruit Loops if you're so inclined. I know. Yeah. I should I should do that. After don't this. do it. Don't do it. I know, right? I feel like stick if you've with gone food-flavored circles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Bumblebee. That is the name of this movie. This is his origin story. Why do you think Bumblebee deserved the spinoff over any other Transformer? So, from my perspective, for it's yeah. yeah. Well, for, I'm curious to know from you too, John. You know, because Bumblebee is a fan favorite. Well, yeah. in, in, why do we love Bumblebee so much? In, in doing these interviews, I think uh, Travis explains it extremely well, and I can honestly say that I feel the same way. And he's the captain of the ship, so I feel like he has to answer. So I, I will say I agree with him before he answers because I've heard his answer before, right. but he's 100% right. Well, you know, from my perspective, he's the, he's the most interesting Transformer in the sense that he's the, the one Transformer who has the, the deepest affinity for humanity, who has the greatest connection with people. Right. And I was I thought that was really interesting. From, his, from the first time we see him in the animated series, he immediately attaches to this human character. And it got me to think, why is that? What can we explore? What is it about him and who he is, who he was before we got to know him, and who he is you know, after this experience that turns him into this kind of person? What is it about him? I, I, thought, I thought that was a fascinating thing to lean into. And this film does, it's an origin story. It explains who he was before we got to know him, and over the course of this, this journey, he becomes the bumblebee that we know and love. Since this is his origin story, are we going to get to hear his voice in the movie? Maybe. I, 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 did you just ask a question? Because I didn't hear anything. <laughs> so if you didn't ask a question, I can't answer it. So I never heard it. <laughs> well, what sound makes you guys think of the Transformers? Because for me, it's the voice of Optimus Prime. That's a good one. Are we going to see Optimus in this movie? I can confirm that Optimus does make something of an appearance, a cameo of sorts in the film. Oh, so yes, cameo! Yes. 
We have a lot of uh, wonderful little Easter eggs that are kind of laid out throughout the film. You don't need to know anything about the Transformers to enjoy it, but there are a lot of fun things for fans like me and for fans of the series. There are a lot of fun aspects of the, of the whole franchise that we weave into the narrative. Right. Um, George, I'm curious to know more about your character. Mm -hmm. Does your character have a name and can we know more about it? He him? does, actually. That's a very good question. His name is Memo. I'm new to the neighborhood in this new origin story. Uh, I'm actually new to Haley's character, Charlie's neighborhood, and I think that she's a great person. I'm vying for her attention, and my, you know, my my search to get her attention kind of leads me into this big bumblebee adventure, and I kind of get dragged along, and things ensue. John, I want to know more about your character too, because we know there are three Decepticons. So how does Agent Burns kind of play into all of this? Can't, they're the main villain. I can't tell you anything at this time. Which is horrible. So it makes this like weird and awkward because you're no. looking at me like, are you really gonna not tell me anything? I've been sworn to secrecy. Like there's a group of people that travel around with briefcases handcuffed to their arm, and it's just agreements that I've signed not to say anything until it's time to say something. We have we have an exposition of footage later on this afternoon. So if this were later on in the space time continuum, then, <laughs> then we could we talk maybe more. a bit more. But until then, you're such a mystery, just like your Instagram account. Travis, this is obviously first live action without Michael Bay. Or, yeah, first live action without Michael Bay. So I need to know who was more of a diva on set, John Cena or Bumblebee? <laughs> well, considering the fact that Bumblebee was never on set, he actually is a CG animated character. Mm. Magic. I guess it would have to be John. No, I will take not. that claim. I was definitely more of a diva on set. <laughs> yes. Was it fun for you to play a villain since you've never really played a villain, not even in WWE? I can't confirm nor deny that I am playing neither a villain nor a hero. I don't even know if I have a part in this picture. I just wandered into this room. You, <laughs> you told just me to wandered in. All right, well, thank you guys for tuning in. So you'll have to wait to see the movie to find out all the answers to these questions. But seriously, thank you guys so much. We are so excited for this movie. Bumblebee, first spinoff of Transformer coming out this December. Thanks, guys. I'm sitting next to the beautiful Haley Steinfeld, Hello, who is the you. first female lead in the first Transformers spinoff, Bumblebee, set to release this December. Yes. Haley, how does that feel to be the first female lead of a Transformers movie? Uh, well, when I hear it out loud like that, it's pretty insane. Um, I feel very fortunate to have been given the opportunity to play this role uh, of this character, Charlie Watson, in Bumblebee. She, she really, um, she's really a special character. She's got a lot to say and and unique ways of saying it. So I'm, I'm excited for people to meet her. Can you tell us more about Charlie aside from what, is she more of like a tomboy? Yeah, she's, she's definitely mechanic. definitely more of a tomboy. Um, she really is your typical sort of misunderstood teenager. Um, and there's this freedom that she absolutely craves and uh, basically finds her way into that. And that's, that's through a car. Um, and then obviously that car turns into something other than a car and uh, there's this budding friendship and journey um, within all of that. So, She plays a mechanic, so how are you with cars in real life? How are your driving <laughs> skills? Well, I will say my, my brother is a mechanic and a, and a oh. race car driver. Um, so I was like, how do I put this uh, lightly? But no, that's what he does. So I, he was on set with me when I made this movie and I constantly was calling him and to set to help me with lines and make sure that he could explain and there was at one point he was like printing out like I mean definitions and graphs and outlines of cars and everything to explain to me what everything was so he uh he was my little cheat sheet on this movie so sounds like the best brother ever yeah um do you have a love interest in this film um that part I'm not gonna tell you <laughs> uh there is tons of of emotion though and love and um I mean heartfelt everything in, in this movie. There are relationships, there are conflicts and inner obstacles and outer obstacles with Charlie and her friends and, and her family and people that right. she likes and, and, and stuff like that. But um, that part, you're gonna have to wait and see. I'm so excited because it seems like there's way more emotion in this movie than mm. what we're used to. How is this movie stylistically different from the Transformer movies we've seen in the past? Well, um, you said it perfectly just then. It has, it has a lot of emotion. It's, it's, you know, uh, it's an origin story, and um, it's very character-driven uh, and storyline-driven. And uh, yeah, I mean, it all stems around this this girl and and who she is and her family and and her way of finding who she is in in life. 
Right. When we think Transformers movies, we think huge, epic, scale, action scenes. Are we going to get that in this movie? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Transformers fans uh, will definitely get their their taste of, of that, of what the Transformers films are known for. So there is definitely a bit of action. I was able to partake in some of it, uh, which was exciting. Um, and the whole, the whole shoot was really, I mean, every day you kind of never really knew what was going to happen. And right. filming something like this where, I mean, you want to say 90% of the film is in, is in special effects. It's right. like, I can't wait to see the final product of this because it'll be as if, you know, I don't know the story necessarily exactly. in a way because it's kind of like I can't wait to see what they put in around me. I hope what I imagined was somewhat correct. Right. Well, this movie obviously takes place in the 80s and we weren't around then. So how were you able to connect to the era? Um, well, first of all, uh, our director, Travis Knight, right. uh, he was himself a child of the 80s. Yes. Um, so he was able to break down the specifics for us. Um, but also just really being able to immerse myself in that, in that era. Um, I find it pretty fascinating myself in terms of the style and the music. Um, so I had a great time, you know, going back to that. But my character, uh, Charlie, we, it was, it was the, one of my favorite parts in developing her was, you know, with the, the hair and the makeup and the wardrobe. Right. Um, our vision boards basically consisted of Debbie Harry, Madonna, and I mean, just iconic women of the 80s. And uh, I, I loved being able to like go in the trailer every day and see them and, and have that be the sort of inspiration stylistically for this character. You're obviously an incredible singer. Do you have any music in the movie? Ooh, my lips are sealed on that. Um, the, the music obviously plays a huge role in this movie. So right. I, I, I'm hoping, you know, the movie's in post-production right now. So everything is kind of in its final stages of coming together. So if there's an opportunity to, to be involved in that sense, then absolutely, I'd love to. So my favorite part of the trailer was at the very end when Charlie basically rickrolls Bumblebee. Okay. Do you know what rickrolling is? I don't, but I was going to act like I did, but I'm <laughs> glad you mentioned it because I really have no idea. It's when you click on a link on the internet and you think it's going to be one thing, but really it's that song by Rick Astley, Got Never Going to Give You Up. Right. So you basically rickrolled Bumblebee. Hey, I'm going to use that now. <laughs> I like that. Are there any Transformers that you can tease that may be in this movie that we might see? Ooh, well, there are, there are, um, We learned that little, Optimus is, makes a little cameo in the movie. Sure. Uh, there are a couple little cameos here and there, um, that I think people will be really excited about. Uh, and yes, Optimus is, is in there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right. Well, we are so excited. Haley, thank you so much for stopping by. I cannot thank you. wait to watch this movie. You Yay. look amazing. Thank Thanks. you guys for tuning in. Bumblebee is set to release this December, 2018.